Let's do one last example of a quadratic inequality. Seems simple enough, right? 3x squared plus 5x minus 4 is less than 0. So we need to find those critical values, right? And you know what? Since this is quadratic, we kind of have in mind that it's going to have this shape right here. And as long as we can find out where it crosses the x-axis, then we're going to be, be in good shape because it says less than 0. So less than 0 is going to mean this region where it's below, so I know that I'm already looking here. So all I need to do is find those critical values. All right. So in order for us to do that, we're going to rewrite this guy as we have done so many times before. We rewrite this as an equation. So 3x squared plus 5x minus 4 is equal to 0. All right, we just have to solve this. Let's factor, right? We've been factoring everything else. If I do factoring and do the AC method, 3 times 4 is 12. And are there factors of 12 that subtract 5? Unfortunately, there are not. So since this doesn't factor, and we know we can't use the square root property, we're left with either completing the square or the quadratic formula. To complete the square, you want this lead coefficient to be 1. It's not, but we can get it to be 1 by dividing everything by 3. But when I divide these guys by 3, I end up with fractions, so completing the square is not your best friend. So this is an example of using the quadratic formula. So remember the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, just like that. All right, so make sure you correctly identify your a, b, and c and plug them into the formula correctly. So x is equal to big fraction. Uh, b is 5, so negative b is negative 5, plus or minus. We have the square root. b squared, well, b is 5, so b squared is 25 minus 4ac. So as you have seen me in the past, I write this guy up to the side, so negative 4 times a, 3, times c, negative 4. So negative times negative makes this guy positive. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 4 is 48. All divided by 2a, so a is 3, 2 times a is 6. So we get x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root. 25 and 48 is 73, and this is all divided by 6. So these are our critical values. Well, how do I know which one is which, right? So we know on the number line, I'm going to have one of these guys with the plus and one with the minus. Well, make it really easy for you. The plus part is going to be the one on the right, and the minus is the one on the left. So this is going to be the critical value negative 5 minus the square root of 73 all divided by 6. And this one is going to be negative 5 plus the square root of 73, all divided by 6. It's not the prettiest looking number, but it is exact. And our solution set, as we showed above, is going to be this region that's in between those guys, because that's where your parabola dips down. So it's going to be everything in between these two values. And since it says less than but it doesn't say equal to, these guys remain open. So when we describe the solution set using interval notation, we're going from negative 5 minus the square root of 73 over 6 to negative 5 plus the square root of 73 all over 6. And since we are not including those endpoints, We use parentheses. Again, I know this is an ugly looking answer, but that's what it is. 
if the inequality had been changed from less than to be less than or equal to, the or equal to part would mean that you would include those endpoints and you would then have brackets on the ends. And so this is a case where using a sign chart isn't all that helpful because it doesn't factor. But by knowing the shape and knowing the picture, we knew that we were looking for this region right here because this is where we end up with negative values. So there we go.